I'm going to push it to the maximum. As far as I'm concerned, the things they said are true. You voted for this initiative, you are voting for the legalization of marijuana. All marijuana use is medical. And I, I, that is the new effect of our country. I believe that. Cannabis Bias Club told me to love my enemies. And I, yeah. at first I didn't understand it because yeah. you know, I have trouble enough loving my friends, let alone love my enemies. And I think, wow, I love my enemies. And it wasn't until this campaign that I realized how I love my enemies. My enemies campaigned up and down the state of California, telling everybody, a drug dealer put this on the ballot. This is a loosely worded, cleverly crafted initiative that if you vote for this, you're voting for legalization of marijuana. This was put on by a drug dealer that's selling marijuana to young kids. Well, he was right about that. I did sell marijuana to, you, to four teenagers. Four teenagers that had leukemia and AIDS. And their parents came in with them. And you know, I started the Cannabis Bias Club in memory of my lover who died of AIDS. And I started it as a place to get marijuana that was mold-free, pesticide-free, discount prices, and in an environment where people were brought together. What started out as a place to get marijuana wound up to be so much more. Wound up to be about lonely people not being so alone. About people that have been shut out of our society. That feel that they're worthless. The club was about friendship and ultimately about love. And I think about what we did in California I, I know it is not the end. Now, I've worked for this for 26 years of my life. I spent two years in prison. I have been shot by the cops. I have been called a faggot. I have watched my lover beat up by the cops. I have seen my friends assassinated by the cops. All for marijuana, a, me a medical herb that helps so many people, has created such turmoil in my life. And I have... I have waited 26 years for this moment, and I thought somehow it would be the end. But I realize now it is just the beginning, that we have so much work ahead of us that, that uh, Tibetans have a, a, a saying that is a thousand mile journey starts with the first step. And I realized that we have really just taken the first step, and all the things that I want in my life the end of homelessness, the end of hunger, the end of despair, the end of greed and capitalism, materialism, all those things I want are not going to happen in my lifetime. That I know that I've taken the first step and that there will be thousands more steps ahead of me, but I will not be there. But I am passing on the torch. I have helped take that first step. It has nearly cost me my life. But I have, it has given me my life meaning. And I, I like to speak, pass that on. And it wasn't just about marijuana. It was about loneliness. It was about all the things that really matter in our lives. It was about being friends with each other. And you know, I come to Holland and it feels so good. It feels so free here, you know? But it also, marijuana doesn't feel that special. You know, I go into these cafes, and there's seven people, and they're just sitting around. It doesn't feel as special as we have in, New in America. And you know what I'm looking for? That specialness. A and it's not just a product. That it is something else. It is a mental frame of mind that makes you question who you are and where you're going. That's what happens in America. I, I, I think it's great that we can walk into a cafe, but I think in the end, we don't want commercialization. We don't need another product. What we need is a medicine that has been brought back from the centuries to help us cope with the future and now. And you know, uh, what we did in California has, you know, kind of made me a media star. But I have never failed you in it. 
I, ha I will never embarrass you. At the same time, I have not asked for this, that I did not choose this, that somehow I have been chosen by some kind of higher being for this role. And I, knew no, I do know I'm not the most perfect person, that I have tried to rise to the occasion, that inwardly I'm a very shy man. And it takes a lot of courage to just get here and be here with you. But I can tell you one thing, that it has been an honor. It has been an honor for me to serve you, to help you take that thousand mile journey, that first step. And it has caused me a lot of pain in my life. But you know, whenever I think about the marijuana movement, I think about the civil rights movement in America. I think about a woman named Rosa Parks who refused to get to the back of the bus. I think about people that had to cross a bridge in Montgomery, Alabama, and how they were bitten by dogs and beaten by Jim Crow. And I think about these people, how much they had to suffer. And I think about our, old movement, our own movement. I think about my pain and being shot. And I think about 10 million arrests. And I think our time is now that we have suffered enough and that we, we as a people, as, as, a, as a people, are the continuation of the civil rights era. Right. And that we, right. like them, are not going to get back to the back of the bus anymore. I thank you very much. Don't leave, Dennis. Dennis, stay right here. Legal bill is good. He's correct me on the line. Yeah, on the federal. Dennis, what can you repeat the question before you answer? Well, he wanted to really know what, what the effect of 215 is going to have on the state of California. And of course, you know, uh, and the whole country. Well, you know, uh, the whole country is a big signal that the war on drugs is a total failure and that marijuana has therapeutic uses and it cannot be denied any longer. Uh, since the election, my nemesis, uh, Dan Lundgren, who I happen to love, <laughs> which you know, it drives them crazy when you love them, you know, more than if you hate them. And uh, so I, I like to confound my enemies. And uh, I sent out a press release about six days ago when Sheriff Brad Gates of uh, Orange County went to Washington to circumnavigate Prop 215. And uh, I accused Attorney General Lundgren of joining Brad Gates in their plot against the people of California. The next day, my surprise, the press secretary of Dan Lundgren calls me up and denies that Dan Lundgren has sent an emissary to Washington to circumnavigate the law. And so, like, here's what I was thinking. Well, number one, they didn't have to call me. Number two, you know, uh, it felt like the white flag. It felt like the, the white flag of surrender is coming up from the Attorney General. And he is the one man in a pivotal role in this whole thing. Because remember, he has gone up and down the state saying that marijuana is legal if you vote for this. Now he is caught eating his words. And I have I, I, any chance I can get, I remind him what he said. And in my press release, I of course quoted him liberally, and all my enemies, and that's another part of loving them, is like they try to demonize this issue so much. I mean, they brought in heavy hitters, three ex-presidents, uh, McCaffrey, up and down the state, Diane Feinstein, every sheriff, every chief of police, they threw everything at me, arresting me, busting me, attempting to demonize me in the press. And that they had did everything they could to me, and yet we still won. And they they went up and down the state. You vote for this? You're really dumb. Well, now they're backsliding. Turns out people in California didn't know what they were voting for, and they were tricked. Uh, in other words, the people that voted for it are stupid, and the people that vote against it are smart. But we're going to make them eat that too. See, everything they're doing, they're digging a hole, and they're thinking I'm going to go in it but they've gotten so far in that hall that they can't get out. And they asked me, Dennis, can you give me a hand? Uh, oh no, I'm too busy. So anyway, uh, I, have had, I have had overtures recently from Washington 
at the highest of levels, I, I think about me, if highest of levels, in contact with me, asking me to stop my confrontational politics for a dialogue. And so it feels to me that they are reaching out to me, which is a symbol of you. And I, I represent you. Do not think that I ever represent me. They are, they are extending a hand to us in an era of conciliation. And I have withdrawn all my attacks against them. And I am toning down the rhetoric of the campaign. But I am not going to let them rob what we want in California. I'm going to push it to the maximum. As far as I'm concerned, the things they said are true. You voted for this initiative. You are voting for the legalization of marijuana. All marijuana use is medical. And I, I, that is the new effect of our I believe that.